court, to our understanding, nothing of any archaeological significance has ever been found. Then the next paragraph from the Department of Antiquities. Ron Wyatt is now an archaeologist. He has never estimated the land of Israel. And anything he says is to, not to be considered as legitimate. So I ask, which of these two statements is true? Between these years and these years, he excavated here in the Garden Tomb, or he never excavated the land of Israel? You well, know, one, one piece of paper lets you know that, okay, somebody's <laughs> hiding something. And I'll go back to the very first time that I stepped foot in the Garden Tomb. It was the day before I walked into the old city of Jerusalem, with, uh, and I was in a little bit of a hurry to go upstairs. I was uh, living in um, uh, Petra Hostel, uh, which is where General Allenby set up his headquarters after taking over. And that was a hostel at that time, a very hostile hostel. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I was heading upstairs, but as I came into the city, I saw this guy dressed in all white, in all white Jalabia. And, uh, and as I ran past him, with uh, my first case of Jerusalem's uh, revenge. Uh, you know, I, I knew that when I went upstairs, I was up there and I knew I had to go talk to this person. I mean, it was like, I had to talk to him. And so um, I went back outside and it was so clear to me, it was like a revelation. I knew that I would find him. And so I stood out there and I, I, I just looked and I stopped and I waited and I prayed to see if I was going to give some kind of, you know, revelation direction to how to find this person. I knew I had to talk to him. And there's just nothing. And so I turned around to go back upstairs and here he is sitting at the table right behind me. How he could even be that close. And, and so I walked up to him and introduced myself. I sat down and began talking to him about the Ark of the Covenant. And I just don't do that here. You know, you just don't right. start talking to everybody about the Ark of the Covenant. And he said, I just walked into Jaffa Gate, and I stood there in the street, and I prayed that Yahuwah, what he said, would show me more about the Ark of the Covenant. That's when I ran by him while he was standing there, praying that prayer silently. And so when I opened my mouth and said that, the next day we were here in the garden tomb with his daughter in the area where we first sat, there was just one bench. That's all that was there back then. That's why I commented <laughs> that things had changed down here. One bench, and so we got down there, and we got on our knees, and we prayed. Then a gentleman, his name is Peter, he came up to us and said, excuse me, gentlemen, don't Can't want pray me here. to don't mean to disturb you here, but there's a tour group that's going to be coming in here for uh, for a kiddush, for what do you call it? A communion. Uh, for, for communion in just a few minutes. You're not doing anything wrong. You're welcome to pray. But uh, and I stood up and I said, I just looked at me and I said, do you know Ron Wyatt? He's, he, he just got a shock. He said, well, I most certainly do. He excavated during this period of time. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, and uh, I was here during the entire period of the excavation. And uh, oh so we started talking. He said, do you have a few minutes? Let me show you some things. And so he took us around here, began telling the story, and then he concluded. Now, I must tell you that the official story from the Garden Tomb Association is we know nothing of any archaeological significance that Ron Wyatt found or didn't find. That's the official statement. Do you understand what I'm saying? I said, I understand what you're saying. So, we're going to go from here, I'm going to take you over to, to uh, Solomon's quarries, over where a French explorer uh, chased his dog down this little hole. He was walking along the wall, his little dog <laughs> just disappeared, and he could hear him barking. And so he went and dug in that area and discovered Solomon's quarries. Down there is where he found a half-carved cherub, a guarding cherub the body of a lion, the wings of an eagle, and the face of a man, you know, typical guarding cherub from, from uh, uh, what you see in Babylon, you go to the British Museum, you go to, uh, you know, well, yeah, go to Iran, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> go to the British Museum if you want to see artifacts from that part of the world. And it was parsley uh, carved, not finished, and he chiseled off the wall, and it's uh, 
uh, somewhere, it's not in the British Museum anymore, it was in the Palestinian Exploration Fund exhibit of the British Royal Museum. Uh, when I was at the Royal Museum last year, it wasn't there, couldn't find it, couldn't find anyone who knew where it was, but we've got pictures of it, it's very plain. But this is that which is spoken of in the second chapter of Maccabees, that when Jeremiah and several of the faithful priests received a vision and were told to hide the Ark of the Covenant. And when they were given this vision, they were in this cave hiding, hiding the Ark. One of the priests began making a marking in the cave to show where the Ark was. Jeremiah heard of it. He came back out and rebuked the priests and said, Stop doing this. The Ark of the Covenant must remain, remain in this secret place until the last day when the cloud of glory will again be seen above the mercy seat as it was in the days of Solomon and the days of Moses. Ladies and gentlemen, that has not been fulfilled. That prophecy. Nor have we found the vessel with the two title deeds to this piece of property that Jeremiah purchased from Hanamiel, his cousin, I believe it was. Hanamiel, his cousin. 33rd chapter of uh, Jeremiah, if I'm, I'm recalling the, the incident. <coughs> There's some things that have not yet been found, but this is the this is the area. Everything fits with absolute precision on it. And I encourage you, now that you've been here, you must get the whole series I did on the Ark of the Covenant. I spent nine weeks, Shabbat Night Live, nine hours going through this, everything that can be known and told about the Ark of the Covenant at this time, now that you've seen this, now it will all start to make sense. This is like the, the journey of a lifetime for me because it was being led by revelation in so many ways to put this whole thing together to where this that Daniel spoke of in the end times, what would start the last seven would be the confirmation of the covenant. It is not the abomination of desolation that starts things off. It's the confirmation of the covenant, and that is what launches the fulfillment of the fall feast of the Lord, of which we will have intermediate and then final fulfillments of this. We will have, you know, the latter rain outpouring. We'll have uh, some horrendous wars coming down. There's going to be some big stuff that happens, but uh, the, what, the starting gun to the last seven years that's the last sprint, that is the confirmation of the covenant, and that is when the Ark of the Covenant is revealed, because then will come to pass, we're spoken by the prophet, they shall look on him of whom they have pierced. Not in, as he comes in the clouds, but that testimony that John said, you know, when John saw Yeshua's side pierced, the only one that was there, the only disciple that was there to record it, saw the blood come out of his side, and he stopped the entire narration and said, and I, John, bear witness. I bear record. This is the Son of God. Then in 1 John, John says there are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. These three agree. It talks about the witness in the earth, which is greater than the witness of man. God's testimony that he gave of the Son, which is the Spirit, the water, and the blood. Because when that earthquake happened and ripped the ground open, and out of Yeshua's side poured the blood and water, went down that earthquake crack, down another 20 feet down, onto the broken open sarcophagus where the Ark of the Covenant was, and Yeshua's blood was spilled upon the Ark of the Covenant on the west, west end of the Ark of the Covenant, the right hand of the throne, when that transpired, yeah, I had to get oriented with the couple of when that, when that transpired, his blood spilled on that end of the Ark of the Covenant, that was it. That was it. That was when we were bought and paid for. The innocent blood was shed to take care of the guilt of the offending party. And that is what was uh, represented right at Mount Sinai. The Almighty said, stand back, Moses, I'm going to kill them all. They just broke the blood covenant. And, and Moses said, you know, what we're going to do. Because of this transgression, every year, feast after feast, year after year, century after century, you're going to sacrifice the blood of bulls and goats and lambs and rams. Not that it's able to take away sin. This is a constant reminder that the death penalty is owed. 
until the death penalty is paid. Everyone has to be reminded that the death penalty is owed and the, the death of the offending party is the only way it can be satisfied. Unless someone who never breaks the covenant dies in the place of the offending party. And then he can renew the covenant with the offending party. And so it is all of us that's represented uh, from that, from when sin entered at the time of Adam, there was always a provision that was planned. And that was shown right from the very beginning with, uh, with, with Abel and his sacrifice that was accepted. And now, you know, a little bit more of the rest of the story. Any questions? Where is the cross? Right straight below here, that's where the, the cross holes are. That's where this earthquake crack continues on, breaking open one of the cross holes down there. Oh, th there's just, see, they, they crucified a lot of people. Right. At one time, they had 2,000 Jews hanging on crosses along this roadbed. They had men in chains waiting up to a week for the next cross to become available because it, used, it, it would take an entire week for someone to be tortured to death on a Roman cross. And that's why it was uh, such an amazing thing that Yeshua uh, was, uh, you know, he's dead already. They were amazed because it was just hours, literally hours. So, uh, uh, how week? My time? Okay. okay. Where did Ron actually cut, excavate? Right here? No, no. You're this, sitting. This, this, yeah, yeah. Below this, this is the shaft. That's not a hole. Okay. I didn't know. No, no. It's right straight down. We are standing over 20 feet of space right now. So the right indentation. If this, if this broke open, I would fall 20 feet.